Well, welcome to Forecast Lab. It is Wednesday, and we've got some storm activity here. You're looking at a little bit of old footage from actually fall almost two years ago. Because it is wet, we've had a whole lot of rain here today, so the drone is going to take a break. Looking at the weather across the southwestern U.S., California, Nevada, Arizona, under the influence of westerly flow. You can see that high up there off the coast of California, and that's driving a little bit of maritime polar air into California. And you can see the high dew points, 50 there at, uh, I guess, what is that, Merced? 52 at uh, Bakersfield. So we've certainly got the moisture flowing in. Out in Texas, we've got our Pacific system, which has moved east, and it's brought the dry line all the way to the I-35 corridor. You can see the uh, low dew points there at San Angelo and Del Rio. Very warm air back behind that dry line. And up in the Texas Panhandle area, some cold northerly flow coming into the Amarillo and Lubbock area. The 999 millibar bear clinic low is right there around the Fort Worth area. And with that, we've got storms developing out along the warm front. We've seen that most of today. And new storms going up along the dry line and close to the low pressure area. So this is what things look like earlier this afternoon in the Red River region. There's Fort Worth, or actually there's Wichita Falls. Oklahoma City is up here, and Fort Worth and Dallas. So the dry line did extend up towards the Lawton and Chickasha area. Storms developing along that, and if we roll that forward, you can see those, those storms developing and moving eastward. And with that highly sheared environment, we've got those long tapered anvils flowing off to the east-northeast. So with these surface plots on top of the visible satellite picture, we can pretty well see, see where that dry line is. Looks like that's still along the Interstate 35 corridor from Gainesville up to Ardmore. And it looks like these storms have kind of departed that dry line and moved off into the moist sector. Now it looks like we did have one cell try to get going just north of DFW Airport. And uh, let's see if we can roll that back. You can see it developing there around Keller, north of Fort Worth. And it just looks like a little turkey tower right now. I'm not too sure that that's going to come together. And we had been looking for severe weather potential in this area, but it looks like things are just too capped. Here's the radar as we produce this show right now. As of 5 p.m. Central, we've got a nice little line of discrete cells all the way from Ada down towards the Lake Texoma area. Nothing in here that looks like tornadoes, but they are certainly rotating. We can just pull up the storm relative velocity to kind of get an idea what's happening. Got to keep in mind the radar is up that way. So this is certainly showing some uh, rotation in that Ada storm. So we'll put a dot right there on that area of rotation. You can see it's right there in that hook region. That's nothing I would consider to be tornadic, but, you know, there could be potential later on. This doesn't look uh, tornadic either, and as we go away from the radar, we get to higher and higher levels, and it gets more and more difficult to actually detect tornado activity. This is up at about 8,000. As we get down to Lake Texoma, we're up at about 10,000 feet. However, these do look uh, slightly elevated. And let's see, going further south, there's that storm in the DFW area moving towards McKinney. And we're just touching the very top of that storm up at about 17,000. And we can kind of use this to see what the top is, 28,000. So probably not much going on down there in Dallas. And we'll come back to that a little bit later. Here's how things are looking in the southeast U.S., Got that large air mass that came out of Canada. That's in the process of modifying right now. Very stagnant air. 
temperatures in the 60s and 70s. And on the west side of that, we've got the return flow bringing that warm front northward. So we should see the weather start to de deteriorate as that low starts approaching from Texas. There's the northeast U.S. catching some more of that high pressure. This is the large blob of cold air that's come out of Canada. And to the east of there, New York and New England, some very gusty west winds continuing to bring that wintry air eastward. And to the west of that, we've got uh, the return flow setting up, but it's broken up by this little Alberta clipper coming out of Iowa and Minnesota. Got that warm front uh, just east of there. Some very warm temperatures coming up through the Corn Belt. So we are starting to transition over to spring. And let's see, let's go out to the Pacific Northwest. Not much of anything going on. We do have gusty winds out of the west covering much of Montana, Alberta, and Wyoming. And that's a good sign that we've got zonal flow in the mid and upper levels helping to develop a little bit of a lee side trough and destabilize things a little bit. And as a result, we get these uh, winds out of the west and very warm temperatures, almost 70. This is quite a change from what we saw a week ago. Things were much, much colder in that area. And that's just another sign that we're transitioning over to May weather. Not much going on in the Pacific Northwest either. Low ceilings, fog, and looks like that marine layer has infiltrated. Portland, Seattle, still hanging on in that area. And a quick stop in Europe. Very boring weather. Not much to look at. Things are pretty much controlled by this large area of high pressure producing a lot of fair weather and the only storms that we have are out in the Mediterranean and this looks like an old occlusion west of Sicily and looks like another system out around Cyprus kinda looks to me like this is the main upper system and out ahead of it this looks a little bit more baroclinic and that's where I think the surface low is gotta keep in mind that this is daytime in Europe this was about nine hours ago so my guess is there's a front something like that and then maybe an occlusion coming back I don't know I'm kind of piecing this together as I go so that's kind of what I think is going on there and up north that high pressure just kind of controlling everything And there's our cells moving into southeastern Oklahoma. Nothing particularly interesting. You can see the storm relative velocities not showing anything. Not very strong. Gate to gate shears on this uh, cell near Wapanaka 30. That's about 50 knots of shear. And then this other one here. It's only showing about 50 knots of shear. Of course, as we get further away from the radar, large shear values do become more important. However, these do not appear to be doing very much at this time. I do like this uh, tail end cell. Kind of a poor assortment of road options if you're chasing south of Durant, but uh, certainly got a grandstand view on that cell right there. And looks like very little left of that cell near McKinney. It's moving very quickly to the northeast. So that looks to be elevated. And although we are pretty far away from the cell, we're using Oklahoma City radar, it's still only topping out at about 28,000. So it's not doing much. There's the visible satellite imagery. You can see that the more mature cells are north of the Red River. And there's that cell there near McKinney. You can see that it's barely putting out an anvil. So it's definitely not doing very much. Of course, it could still organize. It's heading in, into some of this better moisture. Although it would help if it had some sort of boundary to work off of. So what can we expect for tonight? I think a good starting point is to take the 18Z high resolution rapid refresh and see how it did with this convection that we got going on. So running this forward to uh, 
2 p.m., 3 p.m., you can see that it's breaking out convection all the way from Oklahoma City down to Fort Worth. We've, of course, got this elevated stuff in East Texas. And we can see by 5 p.m. it's got a bunch of thunderstorms around Dallas. Obviously, that hasn't happened. And then it looks like it did fairly well with the stuff near Ada and Tulsa, maybe a little bit too fast with that. And so we've got two main complexes. That which has not come together in Dallas and then the stuff further north. And then the trend for that is to dissipate. And then the stuff from East Texas kind of becomes dominant and forms up into an MCS. So not a whole lot of upper air support, I guess, with the stuff up further north. Now let's take the most recent model and load that up. 21Z model. Let's see, what does that do? 5 p.m., 6 p.m. Now you can see it has backed off on the stuff south of the Red River. So that's no longer in the cards there. It is doing very well with that ADA stuff. And then we can see the trend for tonight. The southeast Oklahoma stuff move, starts moving into Arkansas around 9 p.m. It looks like it starts falling apart. So, yeah, there's not very much upper air support with that. It, was, it has probably outrun that activity and moved more towards the Mississippi River Valley, helping to sustain that stuff. So it looks like things should start improving very quickly over the next few hours. And then a quick run through the NAM. Well, there's our system there in Oklahoma and Arkansas. So that's obvious. We've kind of gone over that. We've got our Midwest system up there in Iowa. And then we've also got this little cold front thing going on in Oregon. And we can see the anafront type setup with precip up to the north. So we're going to kind of keep an eye on that over the next couple days. And then, of course, we've got the very wound up system in Quebec, very impressive, with the cold air advection back in behind it. So moving this into Thursday evening, things move very quickly east. So by morning, we've got our MCS moving through, I guess, Chattanooga, Huntsville, approaching Atlanta. And then our main surface system is moving up the Ohio River Valley. So by tomorrow evening, looks like the fronts are going to be, I think, some, somewhat like that right there. Probably an occlusion up to the north. And then we've got a area of pressure falls in the high plains. And you can see that area of cold air advection is sinking south through the central plains and Great Basin. So this is going to be our next system coming together. Things going downhill there in Colorado tomorrow. And then by tomorrow night, you can see that low coming together in the panhandle. There's that push of cold air coming south. Of course, up in the eastern U.S., things are also pretty active with that outgoing system. And then for tomorrow night, there's the setup, and you can see the high there, a little anticyclogenesis helping to kick that cold surge south into Texas. And there it is moving in, in through New Mexico and Arizona also. So that's the setup, another fast-moving Pacific system. However, there's not much moisture flux into Texas. So it's kind of doubtful whether we're going to get any activity going. Then for Saturday... Now, it looks like the system finally does pick up some moisture as it moves into Louisiana and Arkansas. There's the frontal boundary right there. Warm front, maybe something like that. And then occlusion up to the north. Then for Saturday, we're looking at that moving east towards the Appalachians. Cold front uh, moving out towards the Gulf and... The frontal systems are going to look something like that right there. So another weak surge of cold air coming south into Texas, Arkansas, Tennessee. And then we can see, looks like a thickness gradient kind of coming together there in the Great Basin area. However, the main system looks like it's mainly impacting 
British Columbia and Washington. So it's not coming quite as far south as these previous systems did. Kind of a drying trend in the southwestern U.S. A little bit of ridging indicated there. See the, the ridge shape and the thickness contours. That's going to be associated with an upper level ridge, keeping things kind of fair. Okay, well, we need to get this uploaded. It's already 5.44 p.m., so we're going to be running a little bit behind. It does take about 30 minutes to render the stuff and some more time to upload it. So let's get started on that. I appreciate y'all's Patreon, Patreon support. That's definitely helping to make this presentation possible. And we should have a little surprise for you tomorrow, so definitely tune in. I think you'll find it kind of interesting. Basically, it's an upgrade to our set here. Anyway, have a good evening, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.